Hi cuties! My name is Anuku Gozumi and this is the channel Nerdy Nekoma. Everything here is about haiku chat stories and fanfic. Thanks for joining us today! If you like this video, please consider subscribing and leaving a like. Before we jump into this, a little disclaimer. I do not own any of the haiku characters, artworks or music I might use. This is not necessarily how I see them and just for entertaining purposes. I am aware that there are similar videos and channels to this one and I do not intend to copy or steal any work from them. By the way, my avatar I created with an app called Lily Story. Their designs are really cute. At this point, a little thank you to all the other content creators out there. You inspired me to start this channel and I really enjoy your content. A special thanks to Rose Labrina. Your tutorial helped me a lot and I just love your videos. Check out her channel too, it's just super cool. Today's video is a Boku Akakuro Ken time skip. A little warning at this point, it's going to be a tiny, tiny bit angsty, but there's also a lot of fluff to make up for it. Also, a trigger warning, unhealthy e eating habits are going to get mentioned, so if you struggle with that topic in general, please be aware of that. And yeah, other than that, let's jump straight into it. Kenma's eyes were focused on the two monitors in front of him. His hands moved quickly over the keyboard as a reaction to the rush of colors flickering on the screen. He had been streaming for almost five hours and played games for seven. It was a calm Saturday and normally it wouldn't have been so long. His boyfriends got concerned when he played for over four hours because he usually forgot to eat in the meantime. They did their best to check up on him, yet they couldn't do that if he was streaming. Today was a little different though. It was Saturday, which meant they would usually do something together for at least half of the day or have a movie night. However, this Saturday all of his boyfriends decided they suddenly had something better to do. Kuru had to study for some stupid exam and went to the internet cafe down the street. Akashi accompanied him to work on his final assignment this semester and Bakido was scheduled for a training match. Kenma was on edge ever since he realized that none of them would be here as expected. The problem wasn't that he couldn't be alone in general, quite the opposite actually, the problem was that none of them told him beforehand. That he expected them to be there and find the house empty. He remembered that Ko tried to wake him up once this morning, but not what he said it had been too early. Perhaps he tried to say goodbye. It didn't really help though. He walked downstairs a few hours later expecting to be greeted by at least one of his boyfriends only to find three notes. The first one from Mikashi on a little box in the kitchen, Good morning love, I hope you slept well and have a good day. Kuru and I are going to the internet cafe to study a little. I made you breakfast. In love Akashi he put the food in the fridge without even looking at it. Bakudo's note was placed on the coffee table next to multiple crumpled sheets of paper. Hey 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 Kinkin, I have to go to a training match. I love you. I love you a lot and I'm going to be home as soon as possible. And last but not least Kuru's note on his PC, don't play for too long, I love you kitten. He threw the paper away and started the first game. It wasn't just sulking, the unexpected absence of his beloveds made him nervous. He distracted himself with games until 5pm when Kuru and Akashi came back. He heard the door close downstairs, something he had been waiting for all day, but instead of pausing his game and greeting them, he started a live stream, effectively locking his two boyfriends out of the room. Why should he be the only one waiting? Somewhere between 6 and 7 Bakido came home and almost ran straight in, but Kuru stopped him. Kenma felt a little bad after he heard the soft whining from the older. He lost the round shortly after and the frustration reminded him that he was rightfully mad at them. He was aware that it was childish, but he didn't care at this point. It was around 11 pm. That he considered ending the stream. Maybe his boyfriends would be in bed already and he could avoid the consequences for another day. He decided on one last game and maybe a few side quests so he could drag the time to be a little after midnight when he'd finally leave the room. It was mid-game when his vision suddenly started to blur. The colors seemed smudged and he couldn't recognize the shapes anymore. His finger stopped hovering over the keys as he tried to decipher the pictures on his screen, completely frozen in place. Did he need glasses like Keiji? 
His mind wandered off and he rubbed his eyes to clear his vision. There was only one word on the monitor, defeated, what the? He muttered the words trying to make sense out of the situation. The chat buzzed with messages and even though that was normal, it suddenly got too much. Trees started forming in his eyes and he heard the ringtone from his phone blending in with the rest. Sorry he quickly ended the stream and all of his games until he was left with black screens. Kenma? Three pairs of footsteps started walking or rather running towards the door, no. It was nothing but a broken whisper and he was sure none of them heard him. He couldn't face them yet. Not yet. He wanted to be angry for a little longer, didn't want them to see how stupid he was, how easily irritated, how fragile. He would break down if they would see him now. He tried to push himself up from his chair, but it was as if his body didn't belong to him. Only after he heard a soft knock on the door followed by Akashi's warm voice was he able to move. Hey Kenma? Love, are you okay? Akashi, Bakado, and Kuru looked concerned at each other and back at the door. They were about to enter when they heard Kenma getting up, a few steps then. Thud immediately the door swung open Kuru being the first one to rush inside and towards the limp body on the floor, Kenma, Kenkin, hey. Ken Milakashi stood frozen in the doorframe as he tried to make sense of the scene in front of him. Kuru lifted Kenma's body slightly and checked his breathing. Relief washed over all three of them when they acknowledged the quiet breaths. Still, what's wrong with him? Is he okay? Is he going to die? Akashi saw Bakudo panicking, and even though he knew that the ace was overreacting shock and horror ran through his system at the thought of Kenma dying. No one is going to die. He said in an attempt to soothe the tension and calm both Bakuto and himself. Yes, everything is going to be alright. Kiru smiled at both of them. It was genuine, not quite reaching his eyes but genuine. How can you be so chill about this? Bakuto was freaking out again. This time Akashi had no idea what to say, especially since he asked just what he himself was thinking, because I've been with our little kitten for a little longer than you two. Not just as his lover but as his friend too. He lovingly caressed Kenma's cheek and put a strand of hair behind his ear, so? Kuru lifted the unconscious Kenma bridal style and placed the younger's head against his chest. Careful, do you really think it's a good idea to just pick him up? What if he hit his head and that's why he fainted? Arg, should we bring him to the hospital? But how if we can't pick him up? I'll call an ambulance, stop Ko. It's fine. Let's all calm down, okay? Bakudo was about to argue but he was stopped by Akashi, who gently placed a hand on his ass. Okay, explain why do you think it's not necessary to get him to a doctor? They followed Kuru downstairs while he answered, Well, it's not exactly the first time this happened. When he was a child and especially in his teenage years it was an almost monthly to weekly occasion. I was quite terrified at first. This didn't really calm the others. Bakudo clenched Akashi's hand tightly and the younger returned the favor, why? Is he sick or something? He sounded so worried and heartbroken, that Kiru looked at him shocked only now realizing how his words were perceived. A few tears gathered in the silver-haired eyes, oh my god, no, no, Kautro that's not what I meant. He is fine, I swear. Kiru added quickly and walked over to his boyfriend. He cupped his cheeks and wiped the tears away that started to fall. All I was saying is that Kenma never really got the hang of looking after himself when it comes to stuff like regular meals. He gets so caught up in his games that he doesn't even notice time passing by. And sometimes when he gets up too quickly he faints. It didn't happen recently because we all made an effort to look out for him. Bakudo nodded, taking a deep breath before pulling the other into a tight hug and hiding his face against Kuru's shoulder. One arm wrapped around the other man, while he still held Ukashi's hand with the other. Kiru held him and gave soothing strokes across his back, are you sure? Kiru looked him dead in the eye, a 100%, but if he doesn't wake up within the next 10 minutes, we'll get him to a hospital. Akashi nodded satisfied with the answer, while Bakudo tightened the hug. The black-headed gave the ace's hand a last reassuring squeeze before moving over to the couch, where Kiru placed Kenma. Hey love he softly rubbed his thumb over the smaller's cheeks and took the setter's hand in his. Bakuto watched them over Kiru's shoulder and left the hug after a minute to also kneel beside Kenma, 
I'm going to get a glass of water for him. Most likely he forgot to drink some. Kiru's words were quiet and he slowly and a little shaky walked towards the kitchen. Akashi could see that this whole event bothered him more than he was willing to admit. Kiru played strong for all of them and that was something Akashi was forever grateful for. Kaotro can you look after Kinma? I'm going to look for a snack, to get his blood sugar back on track. Bakato nodded and Akashi followed Kuru in the kitchen. He looked at the rigid figure leaning over the kitchen sink even though the glass next to him was already filled with water. Tetsu? Huh? Are you alright? Yeah, just a bit shaken I guess. Makashi nodded and walked up to the fridge. It's not something you get used to, you know. Seeing him like that, unconscious and unresponsive, yeah, but it's like you said he is going to be fine, I know, I know Kuru sighed. How is it that we are more freaked out than Ko? Akashi tried to lighten the mood and it worked a little chuckle escaped Kiru's throat and his expression lightened a little. I don't know, Kiru, when was the last time you saw Kenma eat something? Yesterday, I think. I brought him dinner upstairs, yeah, but did you saw him eat it? Um no, it was late. Kenma was still playing games and I wanted to get to bed so I just placed it beside him. Why, though? I thought you made him breakfast this morning. Akashi didn't answer and just put two things from the fridge on the kitchen counter. A plate with yesterday's leftovers and the bento box he prepared for Kenma this morning. O.S.H.T. Kuru's eyes widened and he sprinted towards the living room. Akashi following not far behind. Has Kenma woken up yet? What? As Kenma Kuru interrupted himself as he saw the smaller man lifting his head to look at him. Kenma. He ran towards his boyfriend and pulled him into a bone-crushing hug. Kiru, no need to yell like that Ken stiffened before relaxing against the older, only to be pushed away again, huh? Sorry, I just thought. You you might have fainted again. Oh they sat in silence for a few seconds. Guilt overcame the blonde as he looked at each of his boyfriends individually. Seeing Bakato and Kiru seriously worried hurt, but not as much as Akashi. The other setter was no one who wore his heart in his sleeve and most of the time it was pretty hard to know what he thought or felt. Right now, however, his fear and worry was so unmistakable displayed in his expression, that Kenma couldn't bear to look at it for too long. He lowered his head and felt new tears starting to form. But before he could say anything Bakudo's loud voice interrupted the silence. My turn. He pulled Kenma in a bear hug, much more gentle than expected. Usually, his hugs were full of energy and maybe a little too passionate, not that any of them would ever complain. Now, even though he opened his arms in the same rapid and wild motion, he wrapped them around the younger so careful as if he was made from glass as if he was fragile. Without another word, Kenma grabbed his shirt and held on tightly, burying his face in the taller's chest, in an attempt to hide his tears and the embarrassed blush on his face from his partners, Hey kitten! It's going to be okay. He gave the setter a few soothing pats on the back before opening his arms wider to invite the other two into the hug. Kiru, who still was only a few inches away from them, immediately accepted and hugged Kenma from behind practically forming a protective circle around the younger. Akashi took a few long steps before entering the hug from the side, wrapping one arm around Kiru and the other around Kenma while acknowledging the weight of Bakato's arm on his shoulder. Soft sobs emerged from their core and instantly everyone got a bit closer, always on the lookout for any sign that the gesture was unwelcomed. But instead of pushing them away Kenma, mirrored their action, one of his hands found Kuru while the other still held onto Bakudo's shirt. They sat like that for a moment, exchanging soothing words, soft whispers, and tender promises. Little, loving gestures were displayed and terms of endearment found their way into silent homes. It was Akashi, who first noticed that the problem at hand still wasn't solved and that for one scuttling wasn't the solution. He carefully retreated himself from the hug and attempted to get up, but before he could leave to get the necessary items a small hand wrapped itself around his wrist. The grip only lasted for a couple of seconds before loosening shortly after and Kashi saw Kenma just eye time to prevent him from falling down the couch, just like Bakado who reacted by grabbing onto the back of Kenma's shirt. Kiru jumped up from the couch to make space for Kenma, sorry, dot dot dot, 
I got up too fast everyone tried to focus on getting their hearts back to beat at normal paces, damn it Kenma, I swear to god one day you going to be the death of me he chuckled and smiled slightly at the other, who blushed but didn't dare to look him in the eyes, Kautro, could you get the pillow over there and put it under his feet to lift them up a little? Yes, and Kuru stay next to his head, would you? Keep an eye on him in case he faints again or tries to get up. Which he is not allowed to by the way, alright. They both followed the given orders and Akashi hesitated for a second, expecting the other setter to protest but he heard nothing but a small groan when Bakido forced him to move so he could position the pillow correctly. The tension stayed. Akashi wanted to finally get the food and water for Kenma so all of them could relax a little, but was stopped by the person in question, Kashi. Yes love? He answered a little confused as to why Kenma would use his last name. A short version of it, but still. Looking back at him he was meet with questioning eyes but no words. There was no need for it, I'm just going to get you something to eat and drink. You need it to get better and we need it to ease our worries. His smile faded a little. After the words were spoken silent spread to the room and Kenma turned his gaze back towards the ceiling, away from Akashi. A somewhat guilty expression took over the confusion. After Akashi handed Kenma the snacks he ate them without any complaints, to everyone's surprise, Kenma, why didn't you eat the breakfast Keiji prepared for you? Or the meal I brought you yesterday? There was no anger in their voices, no accusations or anything alike. Just worry and honest concern, sorry, stop apologizing, we don't blame you we just want to understand so that we can help. I guess I just forgot, oh Kenkin, you can't forget to eat, you need food, I know Kenma's gaze was focused on the ground, you don't usually forget, though. They all looked at Kuru as if they wanted to ask are you serious? I mean I get yesterday, with you being focused on your game and all, but why this morning? Why are you surprised? I guess I just never got the hang of looking after myself bitterness filled Kenma's voice way more than he intended but he couldn't help but feel hurt when he heard how the others perceived him. Like a burden, like someone fragile. Someone who can not look after himself, someone dependent, someone who needs to be cared for, what, no, that's not what I meant, but isn't it true though? You do so much for me, it's like I depend completely on you. Like I can't even manage to eat for myself and get totally freaked out if you aren't there as expected. And and I his body was shaking and it took him a moment to realize that it was shaken by sobs. Cries that got louder by the minute, I'm such a burden to all of you, what? Oh no, you're not, Kenma, you are not a burden to any one of us, and you are very independent on normal days, today is just a bad example, besides, it's okay to depend on your partners from time to time. We all support each other in our own ways. That's perfectly normal especially after living together for a while, and not at all problematic if it's within a reasonable level, exactly, was that why you forgot to eat? Because we weren't home as anticipated? Kenma nodded. Oh my god, we're sorry kitten, we totally forgot to tell you, why are you saying this, like it is your fault? I should be capable of caring for myself. I'm a grown adult just like you. You should not have to worry every time you leave the house, we don't. We don't worry because we don't have to, you are just as capable as every one of us. We all get irritated sometimes, which throws us off and we forget about important things like food or telling your boyfriend that you won't be here this weekend, but I get irritated so easily, and that's okay, everyone has different needs, I mean take Kautro for example, some might consider it silly that he needs so many hugs and reassurance as a sign of affection. But do you? No, exactly. And we don't think your needs are silly either, exactly they stood in front of their beloved. A little uneasy and nervous as they waited for Kenma's reaction. Kenma on the other hand still only focused on observing the floor beneath him. Yet after a couple more seconds of heavy silence and Bakido getting more and more agitated he simply lifted his arms in their direction. Not looking up but silently asking for a hug, oh Kenkin. They gladly accepted with Bakito being the first to reach the blonde followed by Akashi and Kuru, who caused them all to fall over on the couch. Kenma laughed at that and the others were quick to join. The End Thanks 
for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video. If you did, consider subscribing to my channel so you won't miss out on anything in the future. Also, feel free to point out any mistakes in the comments, leave suggestions, requests and or opinions. I'd love to hear what you think about my comments. Just please remember to be respectful. Also, those who have, of you who have seen my previous video might have noticed that I did not use my normal voice this time. I just wanted to try it out and it is a little bit faster and easier to make it that way. However, if you think the other was a little better, I'll go back to it gladly. Just, well, <laughs> give me feedback in the comments and have a wonderful day.